The man known as the Manoa Rapist will not be freed anytime soon in a sharp reversal before the parole board today. Always Investigating has been following the story and has an update. Gina? Joe, just six months after the parole board said they'd consider a parole plan, his release has been moved back to square one, told to wait for a work furlough placement that the state has been reluctant to provide. John Freudenberg committed multiple rapes and assaults in the 1980s in Manoa, and in a plea deal was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole, a possibility that's come closer and farther in a back-and-forth limbo before the parole board every appearance since his 15-year minimum was passed. I've served 250% of that minimum, um, 35 years on a 14, on a 15 year minimum. My punishment won't end when I, if and when I was to walk out that door, my punishment will continue for the rest of my life in one way or another. And I accept that as part of the price that, that I should pay for what I did. The board has ordered you to work furlough since 1997. And you have been turned out every single time. The Hawaii Paroling Authority willing to let him take his first steps outside of Halava Prison, but only into a work furlough program they don't control admission to. Only the Department of Public Safety can schedule that. And they say continually his application is under review and that a specific plan for him is not yet approved, something the Honolulu Prosecutor's Office agrees with. If the system itself has inadequate resources to properly monitor him, then, then he should not be let out. But Freudenberg's attorney says Freudenberg is being singled out. I see clients that I've had and other clients from the public defender's office who have committed similar offenses, even worse offenses, murder, and they make furlough, and then they go on to parole. Yep, Mr. Freudenberg can't even get to step one. Back in March, the board under a different chairman seemed sympathetic to Freudenberg's furlough impasse with the Department of Public Safety and showed a willingness to at least consider a plan to let him out of prison straight to parole. Last spring, they asked him to come back in six months. That was today. I am no longer dancing around. You are qualified for parole. And my vote will be for you to be paroled. But she was the only one. Let's not forget, there are X amount of victims, okay, that we have to think about too. We're going to deny parole today, recommend work furlough, and we'll see you in 11 months. The board added a requirement for the Department of Public Safety to put Freudenberg on electronic monitoring during any furlough they let him out for. The board is also requiring curfew and aftercare in a furlough plan. Everything and more. We asked for, even willing to pay, even pay for it out of his own pocket, the Department of Public Safety did nothing. Okay, I think you should, again, best raise those arguments with public safety. And right. that's shouting into the wind, which is virtually useless. A couple years ago, Freudenberg had been approved for an out-of-state parole to live with a sister in Texas. But parole authorities there twice rescinded the move. We come here time and time again, and everyone wrings their hand. He's the Manoa Valley rapist. we got to keep him in. He should never be eligible for furlough or for parole. Well, that makes a mockery of our criminal justice system. Now, the Department of Public Safety told me after the hearing they'll add the board's requirements into the draft plan for Freudenberg's work release, but said... Until we are reasonably assured that the public safety is not jeopardized by our placing Mr. Freudenberg back into society without constant supervision, we will refrain from placing him in furlough. Gina Mangieri, KHON 2 News.